This is the NFL Recap Week 7. Gary, the Chargers went to London, took down our <laughs> Titans. What uh, did you yeah. think of Mike Vrabel going for the two? Well, first off, I had the Chargers minus seven, and I am in utter shock that the Titans actually made a game out of it. Uh, offense moved the ball well. Offense did move the ball well. I, I think um, – Look, I think I would have gone for the extra point because you, you're guaranteed with Ryan Suckup, right? Like, he is an incredible kicker, very accurate. You're guaranteed to go into overtime. At that point in the ball game, your defense is playing better. Your offense is actually moving the football. I think I take my chances in overtime. So, I I, I, I mean, I do understand the other you. side. Once they got the... Once they got the uh, the the holding call or whatever the penalty the defensive penalty that moved them up to the one, I'm okay if you go for it, but, but you, don't throw the football. But you have to run the football with Marcus Mariota. Here's my problem: a 41 year old man who's one of the bottom five least athletic quarterbacks in the NFL dominates these one yard quarterback sneaks. How the hell do these? really young, really athletic quarterbacks not know how to get that one yard. And none of them jump for it either. He, he doesn't ever jump. He puts his head between the butt cheeks of the guard in the center, always on the left-hand side. You yep. even know which side he's going to, and he still can find a way to get enough push to get that one yard. I, I don't and understand it's, it's how not these, just It's not just Tom. But, but the fact that a 41-year-old man who's – Less literally, Eli Manning might be the only quarterback that has least athletic ability than him. I agreed. Okay, agreed. But uh, but what I'm that's like, sad. It, yes, Marcus Mariota is an athlete, man. Anybody in the NFL, if you have even a semblance of an offensive line, the only team that might not be able to do it is like the Cardinals, maybe. Um, but if you have any offensive line at all. You can move the line enough because you have enough of a push. Well, there's just enough space. You know the snap count. Yeah. So just, the, just the fact that you know a snap count gives you that much leverage. And if you are that close to the goal line, that's I mean, that's the play. So I'm not opposed to going for it. I, all the reasons you discussed as to why I probably wouldn't have, but I'm not afraid of going for it. I like the go for two all the time, actually. I, I just don't like the play call. I didn't like the play call. When they scored the touchdown, it worked. I still thought it was the wrong play call. Yeah, and and I did not like the play call um, uh, for the two point conversion. I did, however, like Mike Vrabel's comment at the end. He said, "These people didn't come out to London and watch us, a pro team, fly five thousand miles across the con- across the world to play for a tie." Yeah, you know what? Hey, look, I, you know, these people didn't they didn't watch us come out of here watch a pro NFL team, real football and say, let's play for a tie. No, I know they're right. used to ties in London. That's not what we do in the NFL. No. I, I kind of like that about Vrabel. I do like that. It, before you get any further, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, ah, the South's it. premier sports gambling destination. Uh, check out all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Bam. You can also check out all of our stuff over at winningcureseverything.com, our picks, our previews, our YouTube stuff, our podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. Go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about going for two. Let's discuss the Monday night game then, okay. because it was a big topic on Twitter and and whatnot. Uh, I, at I, least with the smart, uh, sure. the the smart guys, right? Like All the right. the analytical dudes, because people were complaining initially about uh, uh, Pat Shermer going for two when he was down by fourteen. But if you look at the numbers and the percentages and the probabilities and whatnot, if you're down by fourteen points. You should go for two on that first touchdown every time. And the reason being, you have a 63% chance or 62.5% chance of winning the game if you get the two. It, going for two is like a 50-50 probability. Now, kicking the extra point is like, uh, we'll, we'll just say closer to 100, right? Okay. But at that point, you're going to tie. So if you kick two extra points, you're going to tie, and that's if the other team doesn't do anything. You go for two, everything changes up. At that point, all you need is an extra point to win the game if you score another touchdown. So if you break it down into, like, I, I love the call. Like, he didn't make it, but at that point, you're still only down by one possession. Once again, I didn't like the play call either. No, the play call the was terrible. 
No. When you get down that low, you probably have one of the most athletic running backs in the league. Just let him jump over the pile. Yeah. He he can get a yard. He can get two yards. I mean, that's see, that's the thing is, like, as long as they don't overthink it. Yeah. And I think that's what happened to the Titans. Eli does not ever need to be the we're on the one-yard line and let's throw the ball. <laughs> That, that just <laughs> doesn't need to that. happen for Eli Manning anymore. You know what's crazy is, like, people talk about how bad he's been and all that, but, like, you look at his numbers, uh, Eli was... Oh, they're not terrible. 27 no, of 38 garbage. for 399 yards and one touchdown. Now, he did make some brutal decisions. He's not great, but he's not the worst quarterback either. No. So, I mean, there's a there's a big line between all of that. That's a, would, would you, if you were Jacksonville... And I'm sure that that's in your well, notes. We'll get to that eventually. Well, yeah. But. So yeah, I'd rather have Eli over Blake. Okay. Would you? So you would trade for Eli? You well, I mean, think... it depends on what you have to trade. Would I trade a one? No. Would I trade a seven? Yeah. I mean, w- w- would would I rather have Eli than Blake? Yes. Would I trade for him? There's where it gets murky. What would I be willing to give up? I don't think I'd give up a three for him. I wouldn't. I don't know that I'd give up a four for him. I mean, good players still come in the middle of the draft. I mean, true. true. I mean, they really do. But so, if if you are just a quarterback away. But but I, is Jacksonville just a quarterback I, away? Look at the receivers. Look at their offense. I, I don't think they're just a quarterback I don't think away. they are either. Because if you look at what – so here's the difference, though, is I think what? Jacksonville's offensive line is actually pretty good compared to the Giants, who I don't have a whole lot of faith in. What What's so – sad is Jacksonville let several players walk this past offseason. See, none of this is even in my notes. We're just going to go for here in a minute. Right? Jacksonville let several players walk this offseason. They freed up $21 million in cap space. And they brought in guys like Don Cray Moncrief and paid him like $11 million or whatever. Yeah, Mon- I like, thought Moncrief was going to be good. Like, No, I'd never. At no point in time did I ever think Moncrief was going to be good. Okay, I thought he was going to be good when he came out of college. And when I realized he's not good with Andrew Luck and in that system, that he's not going to be good with Blake Bulls. Okay, that's just, that's just wrong. But, but, but getting back to it, you spent all this money. Go bring in a quarterback to challenge Blake. Go bring in a backup to say, hey, brother, you're our guy. And, you're and still not, our guy. And not Cody Kessler. But I need somebody to give you – well, Cody's not giving anybody competition. No. But could they have gotten one of these older veteran dudes? That, yeah. hey, if the things go all to hell with Blake, we can still compete for a Super Bowl if we've got somebody capable or competent. Hey, trade a third-round pick for Teddy Bridgewater. Why don't you think of doing that? Uh, Yeah. The Saints don't need him. They went and got him because they know how valuable it is. Anyway, we'll get back to it. So Jacksonville was the next, next part on the list, so that kind of works its way out. Not really going through the game so much other than Jacksonville finally benched the quarterback, Doug Marone, said in his press conference, Blake was pissed. And my response to him was, how the hell do you think the rest of the teams felt the last couple of weeks playing behind you? Like, I, like, that's, that's like you should awesome. be mad, but now you know how the rest of these guys feel. A hundred percent. Well, what did he say? He said, like, we got to learn to hold on to the damn football. Like, that is how you don't value the football. But, but here's the thing. He has never valued the football. He no. has always been a turnover machine, and it's been like that since he was like before he was drafted. No. Even at UCF, he was like that. Uh, you know, you know how I feel about turnovers. And every year, these quarterbacks get talked up, and every NFL scout says, "Oh, but we can fix the we can fix the turnovers." Really? Have you fixed Sam Darnold's turnovers? Nope. Have you six? Have you fixed uh, James Winston's turnovers? Because these are all things that well, they have all these tools. We can fix that. See, I don't think you can fix that. The issue is that some of these quarterbacks absolutely believe that they can throw the football well enough and into these windows that they can get it by the defensive players. That's right. And they never learn they can't. that in the NFL you can't do that. They couldn't do it in college. Look at all the turnovers they had in college. That's, but but then they get put up on this pedestal because oh, you know, they but drafted me in this and that. Their teams are so good in college. They win all these games in college. And it, it doesn't matter looked, if they turn it the hides football. all their flaws. Yeah. When you go through the combine, it's supposed to expose all of them. It does, and these teams just make excuses. They yeah. say, "Oh, but we can we can fix that. He won't do that when he gets here, really." Well, it's, they're it, gonna it was change. the Bills with Josh Allen. Yeah, they're yeah. going to change who the hell they are. 
Anyway, it's like the, the Bills talking about how they can change uh, Josh Allen's accuracy. Yeah, we can make him accurate. But see, I think you could make somebody more accurate than changing the mindset of I can make that throw. Knowing I've never made that throw before, I haven't made it this year. I didn't make it in college, but I'm going to make it today. That mentality of got to play hero ball and giving the ball away, I don't think ever goes away. That's it, which if you're a Jets fan, don't make you feel real good about Sam Darnold. Next up, is Houston good? They no. have won four straight. Now, let me tell you the teams that they have beaten. They've beaten <laughs> – the. I didn't write this down. I should have. They've beaten the Bills. They've beaten the Colts. They've beaten the Jaguars. And, and the Cowboys. They've been, and the Cowboys. I know this. Four teams, nine total wins against those four teams. That is that – they've beaten four really bad teams. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Three of them, they were handed the game. And then oh, last no week doubt. against no the doubt. Jags, look, when you play a team that is just in complete free fall, yep. and that's what the Jags are. Like, I, I thought the Jags were going to go home and get right. You know, like I bet on the Jags last week thinking, okay, the Texans have been gifted three games, and confidence has something to do with that, but they're also bussing in Deshaun Watson. I was just about to bring they're that like, up. They're like all of this crap, and, and the Jags are like, fighting each other in the locker room it should be criminal what they have done to Deshaun Watson like somebody should be charged their quarterback this elite athlete can't even get on a plane to fly to games because they busted him up so bad what what do they do when they when they don't have a home game or a drivable game what do they do if they have to go up to Washington or New England or Seattle like what you just you're just gonna let him fly out right out two or three days early there's I a, guess it's a 28 hour bus ride. Well, all right, you you leave on Thursday, and we'll play just, on I'm, Sunday. Like Houston to Jacksonville is not exactly. It's 12 hours, yeah. but you could make that in a day. Like that's not a that's not the end of the world. It's kind of crappy for a professional athlete. Just I just sit on a bus and watch this the week. Game they film. play at home, but like. At what point do you say? Did they? We hey, need did they just stick on... him on like a greyhound, or did no, they have no, him like? No, no, no. Does he have his own I'm, tour bus? I'm quite certain he had a very nice bus full of all of the things that he could possibly want to entertain <laughs> him for 12 hours. Being a young man about Houston, what I want to kind of get to on this because I'm not going to really break down this game is they are now a seven and a half point favorite for Thursday night against the Dolphins, and I know the Dolphins hadn't looked great. Man, I don't know that they should be seven and a half points against the worst team in the league. Like, if they I, played I, Arizona or the Raiders right now on a neutral site field, do you think they should be laying more than a touchdown to well, I mean, they, they did beat the Jags by 13 well, in I know Jacksonville. They, I know but, they just won by that much. But, but it, no, I don't think they should be favored by that much. But I think this says more about the Dolphins not having Ryan Tannehill. Because, like, it, look, their, their starter this week is Brock Osweiler. On a short week. But their starter like, last week was Brock Osweiler. Their starter the week they beat the Bears was Brock Osweiler. I, and I understand that, but, like, how much faith do you put in Osweiler? See, I put none for him to lead a team to, like, be. But for him to go to Houston and be like, hey, I know these guys. These guys try to embarrass me. I mean, I think there's some comeuppance coming in Houston. Yeah, there might be. There anyway, might be. All right, that, that covers that. We'll move on. Can't go this far into the show without mentioning the Chiefs and the Rams. But because what they are doing is so impressive, it's kind of not impressive anymore. Like, it's just ho-hum. It's a, you're, you're just they waiting the, for the next big they thing, They beat right? the hell out of somebody. So here's how I'm going to address this. Chiefs and Rams, MVP race. Who you got midseason? Mahomes with 22 touchdowns, 2,223 yards, or Todd Gurley with 11 touchdowns. And 686 yards. You know Todd Gurley wasn't even the leading rusher for the Rams last week? Well, but that— Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, I understand they used him, like, out of the, the backfield, yeah, like, no. as a receiver kind of. Uh, but Malcolm Brown actually had 13 carries and 65 yards. What Gurley um, is doing. I know, we've oohed and odd over, over Mahomes every week. Rightfully so. Yeah. Because he's been unreal. What Todd Gurley's doing, he is, he is the straw that stirs the drink. In and he's LA. how many yards do you say you have? Six hundred and eighty six like, yards in seven games. I mean that's eleven touchdowns. And that's without their like that's, without them even using him in, in the fourth quarter. Like, like he's he's like Tua Tungalova. Like he just doesn't play in the fourth quarter because they're up by thirty. Yeah, it's I, I think I mean obviously I mean he's playing in some of these games, but not all of them. 
people are going to give it to Mahomes. Because I think we what, like quarterbacks? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, because nationally, like, it's just a bigger it's a bigger position. Uh, but, I mean, if, if you I might get, feel differently at get the real, end of the season. I think the Texans, uh, not Texans, I think uh, I think the Rams and what they're doing with Gurley is much more impressive. The it, So, and, and let, me, let me tell you, the only reason, and it's really hard to knock Mahomes for what he's been able to do. Well, I, let me let me tell you this. So many of those touchdowns are little like flare passes out, like underhanded yeah. to 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 Tyreek Hill on a sweep, and he takes it eighty yards for a touchdown. Like well, forget, Mahomes forget really the didn't do a lot. All those yards, a lot of those are just dinks and dunks to just freak athletes. Yes, Gurley that, has to carry or catch the ball and run with it himself. I think that the Gurley situation, like. I don't think he would be doing this if he did not have a guy like Jared Goff. Like, in in this system, he is the perfect fit for this system. He's the most important piece to that system. Goff can can open up the field for Gurley in ways that other quarterbacks would not be able to do that. See, I don't know that I believe that. I right, actually, how about this? Not Goff, but like uh, uh, McVay. McVay. McVay can. Okay. Like the, the game plan itself I was just about can say, get I him think into there's, I think there's nine quarterbacks in the NFL that you could replace Goff with and nothing changes. I, I, think, I think there might be more. There might be more. There, there, there are not nine running backs. I don't know that there is one running back that you could maybe – man, it's really early to hail Saquon as this – but like maybe Gordon in 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 L- the other LA, the Chargers like Alvin Kamara, but like the list is real short for who yeah. could take Gurley's place in that system, and be as productive or as good. And the answer might be none of them. It, you might be right. Like Gurley is big enough to be a between the tackles guy, uh, but they're also not really using him as a between the tackles guy all that much. No, he's it, one because they don't have to. And they don't want to put too many miles on him, too many hits on him. Uh, and two, like he, like what, the, what I said before, they don't need to. Yeah, like they, you don't have to waste him. To this point, they have used him perfectly. And yeah, it's hard. To I, argue I do that. agree with that. Moving on, the Panthers and Cam Newton scored three unanswered touchdowns <laughs> at Philadelphia against the defending champs to got give them their got you a, a cover, didn't to it? give them their fourth loss of the season. Question: Are the Panthers looking more up or are the Eagles looking more down? I think the Panthers are looking more up. Okay, all right. I, I so still, you're not giving up on this Eagles team. I still believe in this Eagles team. I think that uh I think Carson Wentz is getting a little bit better. I will say this: oh, when how when the they shine were is off the apple for Philadelphia. Though. Yeah, no, you got that right. Um, but I think they they prefer this, right? Like they're not prefer, but they I think they are better when they don't have, um, like all the pressure. Yeah, like, I mean they're they, definitely they, in they're, the division. They're better, they're that better. They could win at eight and eight pretty easily. Oh, absolutely. I think well, that it's, division it's, is it's why rough. the Cowboys traded for uh, Amari Cooper, right? Like they still we'll think they there. can win. Um. But yeah, the, the <laughs> Eagles. Still think they can win. The Eagles still believe, like, okay, we can still win this division. But man, when they were doing that that dance, yeah, over on the sideline, they're up seventeen to nothing, and it's like, this might be a little bit early. That's right. Like all, all that's, you've done now still is piss pro- off the Panthers. There's still pros over there, man. Those still yeah. got those guys still live in big houses too. My my thought on this was, do do you remember what we talked about after the Super Bowl, and how I told you. That if a team came calling and offered two ones, I would trade wins. Yeah, I remember that. I I would. I, they should have made that move. Not that Wentz isn't great. Not that this is all Wentz's fault. But I'm telling you, the shine is off the apple, and there are people in Philly saying, "Foles led us to a Super Bowl, my man." And I don't know that you want that kind of strife going on. Well, I'll say this: like Foles didn't exactly look all that nope, great like early didn't. on. This offense is struggling. I I don't know what's going on. I'm. Well, I think Jay Ajayi being though. being out doesn't help. Um, I mean, they they got injuries, and and Corey Clement like they were winning it, games before Jay Ajayi got there last year, though. Uh, let me tell you this. Well, but then they ended up building around him. Okay, like they they kind of set that offense to where it it worked for him. Um, Corey Clement like there was you there were holes open for him to run through, and it looked like you remember when Trent Richardson was running for the Browns at, and the Colts for that matter. And, like, you would see entire sections of the field open up. 
and he would run into the section where like there was just a bunch bodies. of people. Yeah, like that's what he was doing on Saturday, and it blows my mind. Like when you're a running back, the the difference between a good running back and a bad running back is field vision. Yeah, like all these dudes can run. Yeah, all of them can run over people, league. like all that. But like, if you can't see where the hole is, like th- there's something in it. I don't know if it's a confidence thing. I don't know what it is. Like Trent just lost it. Yeah, he lost it. And right. Corey Clement, like if he can't find these holes, like that entire offense blows up because they have to have the running game in order for Carson Wentz to be good. Well, let's 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 keep moving on. All right. Justin Tucker is human after all. And the Saints pulled out a great road win, something they needed to do to stay hot, stay on top of the NFC East or the NFC South. The Saints are 9-0 and against the spread in October the last three seasons. I'm loving it every minute. Yep. We don't need to say more. <laughs> we're going to roll through some of these because uh, we're going to go long on the last one, and I don't care if you tell me to stop. It's all good. Minnesota is finally looking like the Vikings that we thought they were. Three straight wins. You agree? Yes, they uh, they look a lot better. Um, I kind of hate that they have the Saints coming in this week. I think that's okay. Because I kind of wanted to see them get a couple of wins under their belt. Well, I mean, they got three but straight they're wins. About, like they're about to be tested. Yeah. This, this is, now we're going to find out. Well, it's and, and it feels better because they got the Saints coming in that's right. after the Saints just went on the road to the Ravens. Man, right. Yeah, back-to-back road games is tough. Oh, it's tough. New England went on the road against a really good team, and this is probably the most complete game they have played all season. I do agree with that. To a team, a guy that watches this team extremely close, defense look better than they've looked all year. Special teams look better than they looked all year. And it's not just the returns for touchdowns. Just getting big yardage. When they made a mistake and they gave the ball away, they they re- retaliated. They re- they countered that. They they held them up. They didn't give up points. And and they, they played overall really well. The only Turnovers hope is, were, were big. Is um, Michelle can't be injured long. Because they don't have the horses anymore at the running back. No, they don't. Which is crazy. Started because like, the season with like six. Yeah, and now we're down to one and a dude I've never heard of before. Who Who's the other guy? Barner is his name. Oh, can can yeah, he's from yeah, Barner. Ken Ken Barner. Oregon. Yeah, Kenyon Barner. Uh, but he's he's a speedster. Like he's yeah. So so it'll be interesting to be, see what. Be yeah, it'll be interesting be, to see be, what Tom does fine. with. A guy like that, right? Well, because he hand him the ball. He won't throw him the ball because I don't know that that guy's been there long enough for Tom to say, let me throw you this ball. Eh, but I think that might be the best way to get yardage out of the deal, right? Nah. Like with, with nah. Sony Michelle, like eventually he earned trust, and it wasn't so much throwing the ball. It was that he ran great against the Bears. Yes. I think they'll keep running the ball with him. We'll move on. All right. Next to last up. How long is it? We're going to do top five, bottom five next segment. Okay. How long is it until my Browns hit in the bottom five? And as a Browns guy, the the time is now to fire Hugh Jackson. It is it is time. This team plays well, but they make mistakes that you shouldn't make, that well coached teams don't make, and the game management of every game is flawed. When dudes sitting on the couch that don't do this stuff for a living can a predict what you're about to do, and b like argue why you're not calling timeout, why you're not going for it here, why you're not kicking field goals, why you're leaving points on the board. We have a massive problem, and his solution is now is, is well, I'm going to take a closer look at the offense. What the hell have you been doing in the past? You're the head coach. What do you do all day? Like, do you just say, Haley, you're the, you're the OC, so just do whatever you want, and I'm going to be in here playing, you know, Mahjong on my phone? Like, like, what That's, are you uh, doing? What the hell is that? You've never played Mahjong? It's a I great it's what a little Chinese is. tile game. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like solitaire, but it's way better. Uh, I think, so the rumors are oh, out that they are going guy. to fire Hugh uh, during the bye week, right? And I think but, a lot this, of it depends on what happens this week. I, I don't understand what's magical about the bye week. We suck right now. Let's fire him today, and okay, we might not win next week. That's okay. We might win the week after that. The issue is that that they might win this week, and if they do, he's going to save his damn job. Yeah, then what? That's do? the like, problem. If, so if just you, do it. Yeah, don't don't give him an opportunity to. Uh, that, I don't know. I, like he's he's not good. He's not good. Um, and I'm not saying Todd Haley is better than him. Uh, yes, I am. Todd Haley will be better than him. I'm not saying Todd Haley is good. <laughs> he will be better than Hugh. Anyway. Yeah. All right. 
All right, what, what's your last one? We're going to get on the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are grasping at straws right now, and it is entertaining to watch. So, I I listen to a guy named Jason Lockenfor a lot. He's on. He's a CBS dude. Jason Lockenfor says, look, I'm not the algorithm guy, but the guys at Sportsline who own CBS run like a million algorithms about everything. And do you want to know the increased productivity that making a trade, trading a First round, we're not even talking about the game. Who cares? That both teams made bumbling mistakes, looked like complete idiots at the end of the game. Yeah. One of them had to win. I guess they didn't. They could have tied. It had been fine. Um, but but anyway, neither here nor there. The, the increase that a first round pick for Amari Cooper brings to them, 0. 0.0. Amari Cooper does not make them based on Every analytical stat. Now, this is a this is a company that does nothing but analyze data. They don't look at personalities. They don't look at heights and size and who used to play where and this, that, and another. They just look at analyzed data. And they see a guy that can't break pressure. He can't break away speed to get open. He cannot catch the ball. He's like a 30% catch rate. And they just gave away a first-round pick, and everybody's saying, man, well, you need a number one receiver. I still don't think they have one. I don't think they do either. I think that they will try and make him one. Uh, I told you this early on. Like, it, it, Amari Cooper's not good against press coverage. Amari and, Cooper's not good, period. And, we can end the story there. Now, I will say this. Like, uh, part of me does wonder because he was really good initially. Initially. I, we, I know, I like, know, early on. I have, but, I have a reason for that that but, I've covered multiple times on this show. But... I do wonder if if being in Oakland has actually made him worse. Derek Carr is twice the quarterback that Dak Prescott is throwing the football. Nobody's going to argue the fact that Derek Carr is a better thrower of the football than Dak. That's, I agree. That's undisputable. Like, you cannot – I don't know that I said that word right. But, but you cannot argue that fact. This is not going to make him better. He's not going to make that team better. He's not good. He was good early – because the cream and the clear stays in your system for about a year, year and a half, and then finally after you've been away from Alabama long enough and all the steroids come out of your body, you suck. It's the same reason Trent Richardson fell apart. It just happens. So, anyway, I am enjoying groveling in the wailings and failings and grasping of straws at the Cowboys are doing. I find it amusing. Um, I love, love, love one day. One day we might take time when we have a section to go over like how I feel about season long bets that we've made, and and how you're under on the uh, on the Cowboys eight and a half baby woo and I got even money odds on it played no juice it's pretty awesome I'm real excited that's a that's a heavy one I don't think there's any way this team can win they have to win six more games in the final eight seven. Nine. nine. Six Can out of nine. Six out of nine? No chance. No chance. There's no chance Can this I team wins six out of nine. Can I go cash that ticket this week? Do you think they'll let me? I don't think they'll let you do it this week, uh, but after maybe this weekend or, or next weekend, maybe. Well, they got to buy this week, so they uh, won't you know, Well, week. next next weekend. After next weekend, Thanksgiving, maybe. I can cash that check. No doubt. Probably. Right? We're not even arguing that. Probably. Anyway, that's the recap, Bubba. That's the recap. All right. Like we said, it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. Go check out tunicatravel.com. All of your information is over there, winningcureseverything.com. Let's move on to uh, the top five, bottom five. 